a very direct at, question. Hold on, do you think hold Israel on, no, no, no. wants to kill yes, innocent civilians? I do. You think Israel do. generally I wants to kill? I do. What I evidence do. do you have of Be that? The evidence is they are refusing to do special operations and instead are relying on bombing areas where they know they know civilians are at and then they'll turn around and say well hamas is using them as a uh, as human, human shield. shield so if someone was so shooting so, at you so if, I, if, if, if a, someone if was you don't have kids man, right? if an armed man grabbed a family member of yours do you have kids no i don't oh do you have okay your mother you talked about yeah. your mother if an armed gunman grabbed your mother had a gun to her head okay and he is confronted by the authorities by law enforcement and law enforcement, they just decide, you know what? We're not going to negotiate. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to shoot the hell out of both of them. And then they come to you and say, well, your mother, sorry, was a human shield. Would you accept that argument? That's not the question, though. Would you accept that argument? You're, you're making up a, a random story that what my mother is held captive. Hamas that, was a, that was an amazing moment. It really was because, look, I don't know what yeah. he actually thinks sure. so i don't i don't want to put sure. words in his mouth i want to be fair to him but to me that moment it felt like at least that israeli civilians their humanity is recognized and taken seriously whereas the lives and humanity of palestinian civilians hasn't really been thought about or considered <laughs> you know like the acceptance of that argument that Hamas uses them as human shields. And so, yeah, of course, we're going to go ahead and bomb anyway. Like there wasn't a moment where, you know, I think people who accept that argument have stopped to actually think about what they're saying and what that means and maybe take a moment to empathize, take a moment to think about it in your own context. Turn mm -hmm. the tables, just turn the tables. If, if Hamas bombed a hospital in Israel and they didn't have the Iron Dome. They didn't have the ability to protect themselves. And that's the other thing that always gets left out, right? Yeah. Oh, well, Hamas is, um, you know, using rockets against Israel. Okay, that's awful. I totally acknowledge that's awful. But this is a lopsided war in which the military capability and the defense capability, thanks to the Iron Dome, makes it so Israel has a far easier time defending itself, okay? Whereas they don't have the, that kind of capability in, in Gaza. But nonetheless, let's say they don't have the Iron Dome and Hamas uses that justification to bomb a hospital in Israel because they say that Israeli officials are using, you know, those patients as human shields. Would they accept that argument? Of course they wouldn't. I wouldn't accept that argument. No one should accept that argument. That is an insane argument. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. with people, I mean, the point you're making here um, and and yeah, the refusal to contemplate it, by the way, footnote. Uh, this is why I hate it when even some left media people who I usually like will, um, you know, will say in debates, oh, I don't deal in hypotheticals or, you know, so, you know <laughs> stuff like that. You know, it's like, it's like, no, you should. Right. Because because right. the, the point of thinking about hypotheticals is to establish consistency. Right. What are the principles that you're using to uh, to think about this stuff? But the uh, but when people are actually being used as human shields, then nobody normally says or should say oh well okay then go nuts right that's fine right that's uh that like yeah you know shoot the uh shoot the host you know shoot the host like shoot the guy who grabbed the host mom through the mom right you know go mm -hmm. for it right the mm -hmm. uh like when people are actually being used as as human shields and we think okay well we have a responsibility because they are humans Right, we have a responsibility to uh, to take extraordinary measures to uh, to to protect uh, to protect their lives. You know that if if somebody, you know, if an actual you know mass shooter uh, was you know like shooting up a school and you know and he like grabbed two kids and other either, either arm and the cops had you know like sprayed gunfire at him, knowing that they'd kill kill the two two kids. Trust me. Later on, there would be a lot of hearings where people would be, you know, held to account for uh, for that decision. You know, I mean, the cop would, totally. you know, like definitely, you know, like definitely lose their job for that. You know, there would be. You know, I mean, they, why they, didn't the Uvalde police just uh, do a drone strike on the school right. when there was an active shooter there? Why didn't they just, you know, drop a bomb? Like, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, he, the active shooter's the bad guy. Yeah, a lot of innocent kids are gonna die, but you'll get the shooter, right? It's just such a dumb argument. And it's 
such an inhumane argument and the fact yeah. that it just gets regurgitated over and over and over again as if it's not an inhumane argument drives me crazy. Yeah. All right, let's watch just a little bit more and then wrap up. Mas then- using Palestinians as human shields is not a justification to indiscriminately bomb the hell out of that region, knowing full well that the majority of people who are going to end up dying are not Hamas militants who are underground in the tunnels. Okay? Okay? It's the innocent civilians who are going to lose their lives. And the flippant behavior that I see from the West in regard to all of those innocent people losing their lives disgusts me. Okay, seeing people having to leave, vacate their homes, everything that they've known, being forced to leave the land that they have. That is exactly what happened to Armenians. That is exactly what happened during the genocide. And the fact that the United States is just willy nilly providing cover for that behavior absolutely disgusts me. Israel has a right to defend itself. How it defends itself is where we should have that conversation. Sending special ops in to get Hamas. Hell yeah, go get them. But the idea that all of these innocent kids should lose their lives as a result of this, just I don't believe it. I don't I I will never support it. And in the long run, that is going to make Israeli civilians less safe, not more safe. It breeds more extremism. And by the way, it's dragging us into a broader war. Okay, you have the Arab world like ready to go. And you have Israel under the leadership of Netanyahu acting incredibly belligerent, doing airstrikes in freaking Lebanon. Okay, talking about going to war in Iran. We're going to bring in all of these Arab countries. You think the United States is going to stay out of that? Hell no. We're going to be dragged into more forever wars. But but I just think it's so destructive, so stupid. We're not thinking critically and strategically about how to help our ally Israel while also preventing the reproduction of more extremism. Yeah, the extremism me, is never going to go away. It's not going to go away. the foundation of what Hamas is. It's not going to go okay. away. In their founding it, doctrine, let me tell you something. Their, 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 their entire, entire family, doctrine if my is entire, to eliminate every on. Jew that lives in Israel. Let me explain Do you acknowledge something. the founding doctrine of what Hamas is? Of, the annihilation I of all Jews? I hate Hamas. Okay. Let, me, let, me, so, let me be clear. So the question but is, how do we annihilate them? Well, you can't find the question. I need you guys to understand something. Nobody wants to see innocent this was a very frustrating, very frustrating moment yeah, because but- it's like this unwillingness to accept the. This is a fact. This yeah. is, we know this based on the war crimes the American government committed in mm-hmm. in Iraq, um, in Afghanistan. Those war crimes and the slaughter of civilians radicalized people in that region, and created more extremism, and did not. <laughs> It didn't solve anything. Okay. And that's the point that I was trying to make there. And I, you know, I don't know if we're going to watch any more of it, but, you know, I say one thing that I think we should listen to real quick because this is, I think, something that most people can relate to, can resonate with. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, so, so we'll do that. I just, I yeah. did just, um, I did just want to say a uh, few things. Uh, so, you know, one of them is that all of this stuff um, about the, you know, the founding charter of, you know, of Hamas, uh, which, you know, is all, you know, is all true enough. I mean, there, I, I would point out there are other times that, you know, that they have, uh, they have, a, you know, they did a more recent charter, not that many years ago, you know, that they, uh, that, um, you know, that was very, uh, yeah, was very, I don't, very and I, I, would, I hate when people bring that up. I, would, okay. Okay, like, okay. I don't care about their more recent charter. They carried out the slaughter of Israeli yeah. civilians. Like, yeah, I, but, but, but I, I guess to me, if you're going to yeah. talk about the charter, if the charter is going to be the be all end all, right. You know, right. then like it's a little bit misleading to only, uh, to only bring this up. I mean that they, uh, in, you know, like the founding platform of the Likud party that is currently in charge of Israel, uh, their charter, if you will, Right says that there should be exclusive uh, Israeli control of uh, of everything from the Jordan River to uh, to the you know to the Mediterranean Sea. So I mean, if you're going to um, you know, I mean, if you're going to make this charter based argument, I think that that you know, I think that that's a little bit more complicated than he's portraying it as being. Now, I don't disagree with what you just said that mm-hmm. um, I you know you should care less about like what any group's founding documents are than, than how they, they act in the present. I think that that's, I think that that's true all around, right. You know, that, uh, that, that's, you know, that that's what we should, uh, that's, that's what we should, uh, should care, 
you know, should care the most about. But then the next question would be, okay, well, what's the context in which that happened? And what's the, and what's the sort of realistic way of making it less likely uh, mm -hmm. rather than more likely to happen in the future? And, you know, when, you know, when he talks, like he's using this language about, oh, how do you annihilate Hamas? Uh, this is also very strange to me because, you know, it just seems like looking around the world, how many counterinsurgency campaigns and how many different places have the announced goal of making sure that some like terrorist or guerrilla or whatever group ceases to exist and how many of them actually lead to the result that that group just ceases to exist. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, also consider that the leadership of Hamas isn't even in Gaza. The Israeli government knows that. Yeah, they're they're all, in yeah, Qatar. They're, yeah. So I just, what they're doing right now, it's so important to really accept this because, again, they can say whatever they're saying, but look at their actions. Yeah. Their actions are not rooting out Hamas. This is a retaliatory effort and an effort to ethnically cleanse Palestinians from the Gaza Strip. Netanyahu himself said that Israel will be in control of Gaza, will provide security for Gaza. That's how he worded yeah. it. Definitely. It's so obvious, guys. And I mean, I, I'm saying this to your audience. I'm pretty sure, yeah. you know, we're all on the same boat. We all agree. But I just, it is amazing to me. I, I The only thing I can think of is maybe some people are consuming propaganda, you know, propaganda that's very pro-Israel yeah. and they're not really seeing what we're seeing. But I don't know how you can see the military operations, listen to what the prime minister himself says on national television, see the confirmation of the documents indicating that they want to ethnically cleanse Palestinians from Gaza and still not accept what is currently happening on the ground there. This is not about fighting Hamas. This is not about erasing Hamas. This is about erasing the Palestinian people from the Gaza Strip. And you see the same brutality. Well, not the exact same. They're not doing aerial yeah. bombardments in, in the West Bank. But the brutality that Palestinians in the West Bank are facing as well makes it clear to me that this isn't just about Hamas. This is about getting rid of Palestinians. And the fact that our government, with our taxpayer money and our weapons, is supporting what's happening really does disgust me as an Armenian. And real quick, one other thing I'll say. Yeah. One of the justifications that the... Turks gave for the unbelievable, you know, brutal acts, war crimes, genocide they carry out against they carried out against Armenians in 1915 was that well, Armenia along with Russia carried out atrocities against the Turks, right? It's just same. It's like so similar. It blows my mind. And you know, people will come at me and be like, "Oh, Anna thinks that she can call it genocide because she's Armenian. She thinks she's a uh, an expert on genocide because she's Armenian." When you come from a people who, who suffered a genocide and, and then lived in a country, a huge part of the diaspora lives in a country that forever refused to even acknowledge the genocide because of their NATO ally, Turkey, you hear stories about it throughout your entire life, okay, regularly, about how fathers saw the Turks coming and were so terrified about what would happen to their daughters that they killed their daughters and then killed themselves, okay? Those kinds of stories. You hear about all of it throughout your entire life. So yeah, pardon me if, if it's offensive to hear the word genocide in the context of what Israel is carrying out in the Gaza Strip, but I can say without a shadow of a doubt that what they're carrying out in the Gaza Strip is genocide. And if you were disgusted by the genocide denialist in regard to what happened to Armenians, you should be disgusted with yourself if you are repeating the same denialism in regard to what's happening to the Palestinians right now. Yeah. Um, and that point about Netanyahu saying that Israel would uh, have uh, permanent responsibility for, uh, for security in Gaza, you know, does bring us back to what we were talking about earlier about one state and two state solutions, because if, um, because if you want to say that you're, you know, a democracy, which, you know, in, in many, like, honestly, even within the green line is, is getting more dubious uh, all the time, 
Um, you know, if you read some of the stories about, um, you know, about crackdowns on there, um, about, you know, people, um, you know, people being arrested for like social media statuses and, you know, things right. like that. Um, something that I keep thinking about the last few days is I think about, you know, the Jewish side of my family, you know, when it was time to get the fuck out of Tsarist Russia, there was probably, you know, there's like probably a timeline where they migrated to Palestine instead of here. And one of the many reasons I'm grateful that didn't happen is that if, if I had, uh, if I were a citizen of the only democracy in the Middle East, TM, uh, then um, I most certainly would have been arrested for some of the articles I've been writing about this. Uh, but uh, for sure. but the um, but if you do want to make any kind of claim to being a democracy, well, look, if you're saying, oh, we're temporarily occupying something, but uh, then we're going to withdraw, right? Then, uh, okay, that's one thing. But if you say you're going to have permanent security responsibility for some place, in other words, you know, your military is going to have a permanent presence there, then, you know, you're going to be permanently ruling over people, then I don't understand how you can be a democracy and say, we're going to do that permanently, but also the people who live there aren't going to be Israeli citizens. Exactly. But remember, Ben, whatever you do, don't call it an occupation, because if Israel does it, can't call it an occupation. Yeah. In any other context, you could call that occupation, but Security not in the context of exactly, exactly. Yeah. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument to access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns. All of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with don't be foolish. <laughs>